So today we will be taking a look at a very different kind of product. It's something I've wanted to obtain for a very long time, but for some reason I just haven't managed to purchase it earlier. But finally, like yesterday, I finally received the latest version of the Elmore EVC2. It's something that's completely different when it comes to uh, PC hardware in general that you can generally find on the market. It is something every like serious do-yourself kind of person should have when it comes to custom PCs and especially overclocking. Its main uh, focus is uh, to be able to have like full access when it comes to voltage control of a target device, let's say a motherboard or a graphics card and especially graphics cards. Today or with the kind of modern uh, generations of graphics cards, the voltage control is heavily limited. So we don't really have proper voltage control from uh, the manufacturers out of the box. So we always have to uh, do a lot of work in order to have high enough voltage headroom if we want to take the graphics cards on uh, sub-zero cooling, for example. And using a tool like this is definitely easier than soldering uh, different kinds of variable resistors on a graphics card or doing shunt mods and so on. So the only purpose of this device is to make your life easier and when it only costs 29 US dollars at elmerlabs.com it's definitely worth it and the device has a lot more functionalities as well. So uh, I thought that we could take a very brief look at the whole thing plus the other accessories I purchased with the device now and then do maybe a test video later as uh, this whole device is something completely new to me as well so I'm not any kind of expert when it comes to this kind of uh, uh, level of technology. So uh, with this you can access the I2C bus or the SM bus of, of a target device and you can also use this device to flash the uh, BIOS chips of a target device, a motherboard or a graphics card, the same way what we did with the P5E3 Premium. And this device can do that whole or that same thing in two different ways. We can use the test clips again or we can solder, I mean not solder, but we can use individual wires from this device to the uh, SPI header pins of the P5E3 Premium. So uh, this is, you could say this is like CH341A plus version. So uh, this has the same functionalities as the CH341A but a lot more as well. So considering that that device that's on the right hand side of the screen at the moment costs around $10 from China, from eBay, you can get a lot more with the same features for just $29. So I think it's definitely worth it. But yeah, so this package came from Taiwan and I bought a few things with the device. So uh, here is a huge pack of variable resistors, different sizes obviously, but the uh, thing I wanted to get with these uh, variable resistors is this very long uh, knob to uh, turn the uh, resistance up and down and this uh, knob is very long so you can actually change the resistance with just fingers so you don't need a very tiny flat headed screwdriver that's usually uh, required with these variable resistors so I think uh, I'm not I don't remember what's the uh, or what's the size range of this whole pack, but it didn't really cost that much at elmorelabs.com. So if you need some of these, I recommend you get this whole pack with the EVC2. Three digit or four digit uh, voltmeters. These are very handy if you do, let's say, PLL mods on motherboards, let's say Rampage Extreme or a few other motherboard models. You can solder a three digit or a four digit uh, voltmeter can constantly measure or monitor the PLL voltage of the CPU or the motherboard. So uh, it would be handier to use something like this compared to uh, manually measuring the CPU PLL voltage with a multimeter that I've mostly been doing. So I got a few of these three digit ones. There are four digit ones available but they are quite a bit more expensive like three or four times more expensive or can be that much more expensive than the very simple three digit ones. And uh, this is an optional accessory for the target device so this is the SOP8 test clip. The same thing I have attached over here to the CH341 
341. This is not included by default with the EVC2. You have to purchase this separately, but I think it's kind of handy to have this at hand. But uh, again, what you saw in my video, it's very hard to attach these clips onto the target power strip. It took me like uh, three or four hours to get the proper contact on the target power strip with these. So it's very hard, but I really recommend you have these at hand if needed be. And the rest should be, oh wait, these are the rubber feet for the EVC2. Uh, these are optional as well, but these only cost three dollars. So if you want to keep the talk, if, if you want to keep the device on a table, let's say, or on a metal uh, plate, it's very recommended you have the rubber feet. And the rest are about the device itself. So uh, the pack should contain the uh, pin wires for uh, the UR, UART and the I2C headers, as well as the uh, uh, USB type C to type A, which you actually connect the uh, device to a, let's say, to a laptop or a computer so that you can actually uh, use the device to and access the software that controls the device. So, uh, and there shouldn't be, there shouldn't be anything else in the package now. So uh, let's just take a brief look at the whole thing. So uh, I think these are like pins as usually the I2C uh, points on the target device, let's say a motherboard or a graphics card, the uh, free pin I2C points are often just uh, points without the contact pins. So the pads exist on the graphics card or on the motherboard, but the uh, pins are not soldered on those pads by default. So you cannot connect the EVC2 to the, uh, let's say to the target graphics card without soldering pins to those pads and I have an example over here. So uh, here's maybe one of my, here's maybe my favorite graphics card of all time. So here's the 7970 Lightning, a very nice graphics card from 2012. Uh, it has a chill PWM controller. I think it controls most of the voltages and uh, you can, of course, you can control the voltage high enough with Afterburner Extreme, but uh, you cannot change, let's say, the uh, PWM switching frequency with Afterburner Extreme. And uh, the 7970 Lightning has overcurrent protection issue by default, even with the LM2 BIOS and even if you have the GP reactor at the backside of the graphics card. So uh, for that purpose, to disable the OCP completely and if you want to raise the switching frequency of the VRM, you could use the Elmer EVC2. And here is the I2C point of the PWM controller over here. So it's these three points over here. So uh, the marking is J503, but they are three empty pads. So uh, you have to solder individual uh, uh, connector pins onto these pads if you want to connect the EVC2 on this graphics card. And in this case, as this is a 7970, let's say if we wanted to run this card on LN2, I think I would solder, I would solder the uh, pins onto the back side. So hold on a minute. So over here, because uh, we would have, if we ran this card on LN2, we would have the VRM heatsink combination over here, and we would have a very strong fan attached directly on the VRM heatsink. So uh, this point over here is kind of blocked easily by the fan and so on. So if we had the points over here or the uh, if we had the connector over here, it would be easier to access that during the whole session. So that's what I'm saying. Okay, I just installed the uh, rubber feet on the EVC2 SX and now if we go through the main uh, specs and included accessories that are mentioned on the website, we have three I2C headers working at 3.3 volts, one UART header, one SPI header, VMOD header for voltage sense and feedback adjustments. So uh, should be three connectors, so uh, three times voltage reading, three times current sense. Built-in USB bootloader for firmware upgrades, 
firmware and software compatible with EVC2N, EVC2S. And the included accessories are USB cable type C to type A, one uh, three pin uh, to three pin uh, connector, so uh, header to header, then uh, two times three pin uh, uh, header to open end cable. We have one two pin cable to open end, uh, or one to one two pin header to open end cable. So that should be for the uh, VMOD purpose, and uh, one one pin uh, to open end cable as a crown a pin. Then 20 pin splittable cables. I think those are like general purpose cables, probably. And uh, two 1 times 10 2.54 millimeter pin header strip, four metal standoffs, and M3 screws. And optional accessories that you can buy separately are OLED display, SOP8 and 16 test clips. I did purchase the SOP8, but I didn't purchase the 16 pin Bausch chip. Test clips, those are quite rare, they aren't that common. Usually the BOSS chips are 8-pin chips. And ASRock 2 SPI cable for the newest AMD motherboards. So uh, the uh, headers are labeled on the PCB. So we have, so it's a bit hard to focus, but I can try. So we have UART, I2C2, I2C1. These are the voltage mod points, so we have ground, uh, V1, V2, V3. Here's the uh, uh, SPI header, and there's OLED, mar OLED 1 marking, but I'm not sure if it means this or that small LED over there, but this one should be one I2C header based on the marking. So we have 3.3 volts ground SCL SDA. So uh, if you want to control the uh, voltage of a target device through I2C or SM bus, you need to connect one of these uh, headers onto the uh, uh, SCL and SDA pins of the target device, so uh, data and clock pins. I'm not like, completely sure how they are wired on the 7970 Lightning, for example, and have to correct myself, you don't have to solder a pin onto those pads as you can just, of course, you can just use an open end cable. So one example is over here. So uh, for example here, we could just connect this to the uh, one of these headers over here and then we can just solder the open end cables onto those pads. So we of course we don't need to solder any uh, like uh, middle pins onto those pads, but of course you could do that if you really wanted to, but, uh, it, but it's of course easier to just solder these uh, wires onto those pads. But if you want to uh, constantly uh, take the uh, EVC2 out from the target device, let's say the 7970 Lightning without soldering or desoldering the wires, then you would have to solder pins onto those pads. So uh, that's pretty much how it works. and. Uh, the jumper over here is for the firmware up, uh, updates. So uh, I think you just need to uh, connect this to a laptop or to a PC, then change the position of this jumper and you can upgrade the firmware of this device. So uh, yeah, it will be very interesting. I really want to try this with uh, at least some graphics card. Not sure how uh, adequate like uh, voltage control you have with this uh, device at the moment. So can you only control one voltage value or can you control the whole list of different voltages? Like uh, all of the different voltages of a Rampage 3 formula, for example, or Rampage 3 Extreme. Do you only have the V core or do you have all of the voltages like QPI slash VTT, PLL, IOA, IOH and V core and so on? So uh, not fully sure, as this is more like a project, it keeps evolving all the time, so not sure. But uh, anyways, if you like to see me to uh, check the newest version of the Elmer EVC2 and hear my honest opinions about this particular uh, device and like hardware modding and using this kind of tool for overclocking, then please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I will of course put all of the links down in the description box of this video so you can check the EVC2SX 
uh, yourself as well if you wish and yeah thanks for watching one of my videos once again and i will see you on the next one